Our regular programming will not be seen tonight so that we may bring you the following sports special. Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. It's Indiana University basketball. Tonight, another Big Ten clash between the Hoosiers and the Fighting Illini from Illinois. Hello, everybody. I'm Chuck Marlowe, along with John Laskowski. John, Illinois comes in 8-5. and five. Indiana is 6-6. Six and six. Both teams really need a win tonight to stay in this Big Ten postseason playoff rush. But I'll tell you, when Illinois came out, they only brought eight players on the floor. They have really been decimated by injury. They have been picked to win the Big Ten and of course, early, uh, they're eight and five behind Michigan now. Uh, Montgomery got hurt, their center, really a good defensive player for him. Uh, Scott Mentz has taken his place and done a good job, but you only have eight players. Uh, uh, tends to wear people down, especially if they get in foul trouble. So it's interesting to see how they play today. The last five out of six games, the strength for Indiana has been inside, and that's been with Blop. Averages about 20.3 points per game over those five. It's amazing to see how well he's come in the four years, and now as a senior, he's finally playing well. Coach's big comment, though, has been, I need more than two players playing consistently, and that's what's hurt the team. Uh, maybe one of the players today... Uh, Daryl Thomas for Indiana back from an injury can help and he will start he should start and maybe he can help inside and give us a little more strength at forward but get away from that two player scoring uh, that Indiana has been used to well Indiana fans keep your fingers crossed we should have an exciting game tonight we'll be back to see how that disposes of itself as we bring you the starting lineups in just a moment RV Sales presents the 1985 Fleetwood RVs, Southwind Motorhomes from $29.9, Tioga Minis from $19.9, and Prowler Travel Trailers from $59.95. Prowler Bip Wheels also in stock. Stouts is open Monday through Saturday with over 300 units to choose from. Hi, I'm Harold Stout, inviting you to visit us soon. We're on US 31 across from the Greenwood Park Mall. After the sale is done, Stouts RV service is number one. With my antique shop and my husband's job, we live comfortably. But even though we're secure now, we still think about tomorrow. That's why we both opened an individual retirement account with Fort Wayne National Bank. With an IRA, we get a tax break now and retirement security later. We get ahead. Because Fort Wayne National Bank is with us all the way. Fort Wayne National Bank. We're with you all the way. Member FDIC. All set to go. Here with the starting lineups is PA announcer Chuck Crabb. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Indiana University welcomes you to the Assembly Hall and tonight's Big Ten game. Now your starting lineups. At one forward for Illinois, he's a 6'9 junior from Chicago, Illinois. Number 24, Ephraim Winters. And for Indiana, at one forward, 
a 6'7 sophomore from Westchester, Illinois, number 24, Daryl Thomas. The other starting forward for the Illini, a 6'9 senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 44, Anthony Welch. At the other forward for Indiana, a 6'6 freshman from Hamilton, Ohio, number 32, Steve Iol. At center for Illinois, a 6'10 junior from Kankakee, Illinois, number 30, Scott Mentz. In the middle for Indiana, he's a 7'2 inch senior from Munich, West Germany, and Effingham, Illinois, number 33, Uwe Blob. At one guard for Illinois, a 5'10 sophomore from Peoria, Illinois, number 10, Tony Weisinger. And at guard for the Hoosiers, he's a 6'2 sophomore from Newcastle, Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford. At the other starting guard for the Fighting Illini, a 6'4 junior from Peoria, Illinois, number 22, Doug Altenberger. Rounding out Indiana's starting lineup, a 6'4 freshman from Michigan City, Indiana, at guard, number 23, Delray Brooks. Before we introduce the two head coaches, though, ladies and gentlemen, we introduce someone behind the Indiana team bench. Now with the New York Knicks of the NBA, please welcome back to the Assembly Hall, Butch Carter. The head coaches, ladies and gentlemen, for our two teams this evening, now in his 10th season at Illinois, is Mr. Lou Henson. The coach for your Hoosiers, now in his 14th year, Bob Knight. Our colors this evening are being presented by the Combined Army Air Force ROTC Color Guard under the command of Cadet TR Master Sergeant Betsy Thomas. Let us pay honor to America with the IU Pep Band conducted by Professor Wilbur England and featured vocalist Professor Roy Samuelson. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what the proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose proud stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red Bursting in air, gave proof through the night that a flag was still there. Oh, say that that star-spangled banner yet wave for oh, the light. around Assembly Hall, it appears as if it's a close to capacity crowd here tonight, John. So I would say we have around 16,900 to 17,000 for the second meeting of these two teams. Illinois, if you remember, in the game that developed all the controversy that has ensued the last time, defeated Indiana at Champaign 52-41, in which Coach Knight started four freshmen and senior Uwe Blop. There are the officials tonight, Jim Bain, Richard Weiler, and George Solomon. We have seen them before this season. Uh, a couple of times so this is I think according to Big Ten uh, rules and regulations you can see each crew three times John here's the matchup so Weisinger in the not ne normally a starter he'll be in there to chase Alfred around Mentz and Blob uh, give the advantage to Uwe there both teams by the way in the Big Ten are 298 for 678 defensively that's 44 percent the exact same number of shots made and missed by each of these two teams' opponents. So it should be a very, I would think, a low-scoring game with the emphasis on defense. Neither team should be able to shoot very well if their defenses 
are intact today. Winters controls the dip. The Illini's Weisinger recovers in backcourt, and here they come. Illinois, a team that was rated very high. Here's the steal by Alford. He'll drive on Weisinger and lace it up. It's off the glass. Thomas back up, scores, and he's fouled. Great play by Steve Alford. He just wants to work on his defense. He just took the ball wide away, right away from Weisinger, and now he, he out dribbles him and takes the ball right to the hole. Good defense by Winters here. There's no call, but look at Daryl Thomas. We talked in the open about how important he could be on the board, and there you see him. Uh, recovered on the side by Weisinger. So Indiana takes the lead on the two to nothing basket by Daryl Thomas and the missed free throw. He played 30 seconds. There's Steve Isle right in the face for 44 Anthony Welch. They want to try to deny the pass across the top. There's Aldenberger. The shot is missed and the rebound comes off to Thomas. He's a gorilla so far on the boards offensively and defensively. Let's hope it can hold up. Baseline. And he gets the bounce. He really looks like he's putting his head down and just doing the things he has to do. Like he, he really wants to go out there and play. He's missed playing and now he's had a good week in practice and wants to come out and play well tonight. George Solomon calls a foul on Alford. That brings Knight up off the bench. A little hand check by Steve Alford, apparently, and uh, the first foul against Indiana. Each team with one as we're in the early going of this game. Weisinger is Alford laying off about a half a step or so. One of Illinois' problems this year has been shooting percentage. None of the players on the team are shooting better than 50% in Big Ten play, so they're getting the open shots, but but they just aren't making them. That's their first basket of the night. Tony Weisinger brings Illinois back to within two. It's 4-2 Indiana. Hoosiers with the ball trying to set an offense to Brooks on top. Harold Thomas. Alford shot as an air ball. And Anthony Welch. I think that might have been partially blocked. And Knight uh, has drawn a technical foul. Jim Bain trailing as Bob Knight Goes separately complaining to Rich Weiler, the underneath official in Bain trailing, has called the technical foul against Bob Knight. Coach wanted a foul called on Alfred's jump shot. Altenberger came out and did tip the ball. Coach felt that he hit him on the wrist, too, and was up to the lead official. And Jim Bain was the trail official, and he made the call. Here's the shot by Alfred. Looked to me like Altenberger hit him in the hand. That was the reason the ball came up short. Weisinger hits both on the technical foul against the Indiana bench, and we're tied at four. Now the inbounds. This crowd is into this game tonight. I'll tell you, the Indiana bench is really into the game. The, the whole team on the bench has been up since the opening tap cheering this team on. Of course, the two big plays by Thomas have given him something to cheer about. Winters is trapped on the baseline. It's all the way back out on top to Mintz, to Welch, over to Altenberger. Altenberger has a good 16 to 18 foot shot. He cannot be left alone. Now to the right side, Welch. Once again, trying to deny the pass up across the top. It goes inside to Mintz. Mintz over flop. It's no good. And Thomas clears it. Another strong move by Indiana. When Uve plays defense and he's guarding his man and takes the shot, Indiana's had trouble with the rebound. Now with Daryl Thomas in the lineup, that means Indiana still has a big power forward in there to come up with the rebound as Daryl did there. Indiana jams up the offense on the right side. Now they clear it out. It's Thomas. Steve Isle. Good little stutter step. Up. The fans thought there should have been a foul as Darrell Thomas gets his third basket and Knight is just vehement on the side. They didn't count that basket, Chuck. No basket? Let's see what happens here. There's a foul on Darrell. The uh, Indiana team wanted goaltending as the, the ball was on the glass and then knocked away by Illinois. The ball did not go in the basket and the referees did not call goaltending. The score is still 4-4. Four to four. Well, I 
see Coach Knight talking to Alford. That he's going, he's putting his hand through the rim to knock the ball away, but the referees didn't see it. There's a lob in the men's. Well, it was right past me. I did not see the official's call. Up off the glass and good. And give that basket to number 33, Kim Norman. Norman, a 6'8 sophomore from Chicago Crane. It's 6'4 Illinois. Alford tries to draw the foul, no call. Thomas looking inside to block. Cross court, almost throws it out of bounds, does. Turnover against Indiana. Well, it control of the game on the boards, and uh, John, quite frankly, I don't see how they played that last basket because if the ball went in from Thomas, Illinois took the ball out of bounds. It's difficult to understand what happened. The uh, Illinois knocked the ball away before it went in the in the basket. It looked from our angle that yep. it might have gone in. And that's uh, that's what Coach Knight was asking about. Here's Mintz driving on Blop, shooting over Blop, and an easy no block by Thomas. Loose ball saved by Isle. Oh, great play! And a whistle underneath. I think we have a blocking foul called on Mintz. We do. His second. The second team foul. We're going to see Douglas for Illinois. Now, we had mentioned once before that Illinois was not deep as far as manpower is concerned. They're deep as far as talent is concerned. Weisinger sits down. Winters is in replacing Mintz. But if they lose Mintz, they lose really their only center now. Both Douglas and Winters are normally starters, so they're actually going with better players now that they made the substitutions. Uh, watch 33, Ken Norman, a 6'8 junior. He got 17 points off the bench. No oh, basket. No basket, but they'll stay here. The foul before the basket is on Douglas. His first. Let's look again, John. This is the first time Uwe's really got the ball in a position where he could score. And there you see the play. All right, we have a timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network to score. Illinois 6, Indiana 4. I know it hurts. And right now, it might be hard to understand. The scoreboard might not say so. But you won tonight. And you won something far more important than just a game. So I just saw a bunch of my kids play their hearts out for 32 minutes. You gave it everything. You didn't hold back. That's desire, pride, personal achievement. You measure these things on a different kind of scoreboard. You measure these things right here. Boy, it counts. These are the victories we won tonight. These are the reasons we play the game. Oaks believes there's more to sports than just good health. The lessons we learn from athletics last a lifetime. Back once again, let's look very quickly at that controversial call. It really got past me, John. All right, let's see what happens. Number one, the ball's off the backboard right there. That's goaltending. And then the Illinois player hits the net and rim, which is goaltending. So the two goaltending calls, and neither one was was allowed, and it goes as a block shot. We're back to live action. This is Steve Isle with the ball. Inside the block, he turns. His first field goal, and we're tied at six. Indiana's been able to get into Uve now the last two times. Mentz will have trouble as long as Uve can back him up and get that ball two, three, four feet away from the basket. Winters now goes to Welch. He's got to drive and lays it off. And a, just a great feed. Welch to Winters. Ephraim with his first field goal, and it's an 8-6 Illinois lead. Douglas right off the shoulder. Alford up to the glass and scores. Steve really had a poor offensive game last week against Ohio State, and I think he wants to come out and do some things different. This time he took the drive all the way to the basket. Ken Norman. Oh, there's a feet underneath. Good back cut. Douglas loses the ball, gets the rebound, and draws the foul. Bill Ray Brooks with his first. Good pressure 
pressure on top by Uve, but Delray gets beat down low, even though uh, Illinois misses the shot. Douglas is still in good position to get the rebound, go right back up with it. Off the leg, out of bounds, Indiana. Heads up play by Steve Isle. That's the third turnover by Illinois. Indiana with just one. That was on the errant pass from Blop to Delray in the corner. Now let's see what the Hoosiers can do. Tied at eight, 14 and a half minutes left in the first half. Offered looking underneath. He's going to have to give it up. right back to Alford to Thomas behind the block screen no good and the rebound pulled down by Aldenberger out to Douglas Illinois gets back their transition game is very good throws it away oh and a great save steal Kyle Alford by both teams. Illinois nearly saved that bad pass. And then Indiana scrapped for it until they were able to get it. Alford with a great baseline shot. Chuck, this is as loud as I've heard the crowd this early in an IU game this year. It seems for some reason they're ready to cheer the team on today. Norman with Thomas all over him. And there's Brooks almost for the ball. Douglas. And it's off the glass and good. Douglas's first basket, Bruce, was the voted probably the best number two point guard in the United States by Sporting News before this season started. Alford behind a screen and that's long. It comes to Blop and Isle chases it down. Back to Blop. And inside he's fouled. I think Altenberger gets a hand over him. That's the fourth against Illinois. John and Justin Early going an observation. Indiana seems to be hustling down deep a little bit more than Illinois is, but Illinois has got that board strength offensively and crashing inside on their own boards. Uve's working hard inside, uh, just so we've seen him last six, seven games now. And Illinois has already taken Mens out because he had some trouble with Uve inside. Now they're going with uh, 24 winners guarding Uve. Isle took his time, looked back inside, now tries to set it up. Indiana trying to free somebody underneath. Lop wants to drive, lays it off. Isle, baseline move. Oh, no good. What do we have? Offensive foul on Steve Isle. drive on the baseline. Here's the camera down below. He gets around Altenberger. Norman's going to come to help out. Let's see what happens. Looks like he had good position. That's a good call. The first against Isle. The fourth against Indiana. Both teams with four. And there's a travel. Good help out by Indiana's Daryl Thomas. Four step from winners to take too many steps. Again, the advantage of having a big forward in there as Ube gets beat. Normally, Illinois just can turn and take that shot, but when you have a big guy like Darrell in there, he causes some problems just with his presence. Illinois forces the turnover. The Hoosiers bring it up. We're tied at 10. There are the turnovers. I hope back to Alford. This is Douglas right off him. Inside, a whistle. It could be a foul. It goes against Illinois. We had expected a physical game, John Winters, with his first. Next time we see Indiana with the ball and, and the camera shows you the half-court shot, watch Uve and Winters working inside. Uve has is, is really done a better job over his career getting himself open. Winters really trying to fight for position, but they're really doing battle inside. Delray Brooks, Weisinger, guarding Brooks. Steve tries to drive, drops it off the flop, hook and can create a lot of things besides the shot chuck and that's what coach wants to do when he takes that drive everybody thinks he's going to shoot he has the ability to dump that ball off as he did then douglas leans in oh look at that that ball was below the rim when it hit it but douglas had the pro roll on it and it slipped over the front edge for his second field goal and fourth point tied at 12 whistle against block Offensive foul, Ube draws his first. The battle we 
talked about. Uve's coming across the lane. Norman bumps him. Now Winters bumps him. Elbows fly, and they call that on Uve. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network with a timeout. Indiana and Illinois are tied at 12. Scott's your first choice for fresh seafood. Scott's Decatur Road and North Clinton Street stores offer a wonderful selection of fresh seafood favorites, both freshwater and oceanic varieties, including fresh, whole, live Maine lobster, and all at Scott's low people pleaser prices. Of course, all Scott's stores carry a complete line of frozen seafood favorites. You can save much more at Scott's. Check it out important role in protecting your valuables against fire. But if a fire should strike, they'll burn too. That's why you need a MyLink insulated safe for superior fire and theft protection of accounting records, negotiable instruments, cash, gems, electronics, and other irreplaceable business possessions. If fire strikes your business, get your employees to safety. Leave what's left to MyLink. Available at Kohlinger Lock and Safe, 421 East Washington. We have 11.48 left to play in the first half and tied at 12, a low-scoring contest, but both teams playing very physical inside. And interesting statistic, John, this is not an easy Illini team. Illinois gives up 41% of their opponent's field goals. They're ranks among the top four in the nation. Uh, and that's what we talked about. The Big Ten, they're a little higher than that, but boy, you really have to take good shots and hit them to beat Illinois. Illinois with the ball. Weisinger makes a move on Alford, lays it up short, and Norman puts it back up and in. They get a good slide on the baseline. There's a lot of hope, and they come right to the board. Ken Norman with his second field goal, and the Illini lead by two, 14-12. Inside. Back out to Brooks. He's all alone, and it won't fall. A lot of purple jerseys underneath that basket to pull that ball down. Here's Illinois. Chance now to go ahead by four. That's off the glass. And good block out underneath by Gerald Thomas. What a godsend he is coming back off that knee injury. He can make a big difference for the rest of the season for this Indiana team. 14-12 as Indiana looks for the good shot. Steve Isle will act as a point, and that's where he's playing. Alford wants to move. There's a good hip fake. No place to go with the ball. Takes the shot. Got the ball. Steve did a good job of disguising what he was going to do with the ball. I think he was looking to pass, and then when the defense tried to block the pass, they left the basket wide open. Tied at 14. Winters, as Douglas tries to use him for a screen, and just pulling his way through, Ken Norman. Norman, a tremendously strong player, had 17 coming off the bench the other night for Illinois. Illinois getting their shots in close to the basket, and that's what's hurt Indiana so far. They've got to force the outside shot. Block lays it off the aisle. He puts it up and scores in this foul. Trouble coming up with the ball. Good pass by Uve. He sees him. And now he stays right with it, though. Good patience of mind here. Shot on the way down, but somehow got it to go in. Cut on the baseline. Illinois converges with four people, but nobody really comes up with it. There's the foul. It's against 22 Doug Aldenberger, his second, the 6'4 junior from Peoria, Illinois. Considered by many to be the best defensive player in the Big Ten. And now here's Isle. And misses. Whistle. What do we have? I think a lane violation is going to put Indiana back at the strike. Winters uh, looked like he lost his balance. Almost pulled Uve all over the line with him. The call goes against Illinois. It'd be an extra shot. It's a break for Indiana because Isle was rather strong. There's a good look at the freshman from Hamilton, Ohio. The second is good. Has three. Indiana has a 17 16 lead. Ten minutes. We're halfway through the first half. Douglas walks it up. Now here's Winters. Watch to see what they look for underneath. 
Aldenberger is a switch and assignments out on top. Indiana will be switching some in offense tonight, Joe, or in defense. Depending on who, uh, you know, who's guarding who, you don't want to switch to give a height advantage to Illinois, but if it's two guards, you can switch. Knocked away, good defense, pressure by Thomas, the steal by Isle, and here's Brooks. In the block, Pops misses the shot. It's pulled down by Welch. Well, that was good effort. He's taking a quick shot also. That's one thing Uwe can be successful with before the defense gets set to block it. He's, he's got the shot away. Bruce Douglas is so tough when he busts into the middle and takes that quick shot. Very quick release. Doesn't look like Illinois had much trouble today anyway with their field goal shooting as they have over the year. They're shooting uh, over 50% for the game so far. Thomas. Now Alford. They want to get inside the block. Alford misses. And the rebound takes a deep carom to Douglas. He'll pull up and score. Soft shot by Bruce Douglas. He has two in a row, and Illinois takes a three-point lead. 20-17 with eight and a half minutes remaining. Kyle Alford won't fall. Here's Illinois on the break. And that's that's a good uh, no call. Welch did not double uh, travel with the ball or double dribble. Norman inside, knocked away, and a foul. They call a blocking foul on Isle. It's going to send Norman to the line. Steve came to help out that time. Watch 32. He's going to move to his left as the drive comes in. He's not set. Yeah, that could call. have been goaltending. They did not call that. Scott Mintz back in for the Illini. As you look at Steve Isle. Hamilton, Ohio, 6-6. Now has two personal fouls. Both teams with six, so the next either way will put one on the bonus in effect. There's Lou Hansen. Unusual foul shot by Norman. He doesn't bend his legs on the shot. Let's see if we can get a... Yeah, a little bit, I guess. The second one is off the rim. Norman, a 50% shooter, and that's exactly what it was that time. One for two. 21-17. The Hoosiers trail by four. They need to score on this drive. Inside the flop. Back to Brooks to Alford. It won't go. Flop tries to chase it down. And in the corner aisle, off his hands. We have timeout with 7.44 remaining. You're watching Indiana Basketball at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Indiana trails Illinois 17 to 21. I love this. We just added a family room. Now the family has a room and I have quiet. No space blasters, no rock music. Just quiet. We got the loan from AFNB. They talk about having the advantage. Quiet. That's the advantage. If you have a need, we have your loan. Because at American Fletcher, the advantage is yours. American Fletcher, thanks. I remember the first time I heard of Farm Bureau Insurance. I was down at the grain elevator helping my dad load up some feed. Checked all your equipment. Check that, young fella. About done, are you? Yes, sir. We were the first family in the entire county to have Farm Bureau insurance. I guess uh, we've all made a lot of progress. Protecting Indiana families for 50 years. The time remaining and the score, Illinois has built a four-point lead. And seven and three, Indiana, that's not a record to be envied by uh, many past Indiana teams. Last year, they were 12 and three and four games is the most Indiana's ever lost at Assembly Hall. Indiana's eight of 18 for 44 percent and a half. Illinois is nine of 16 for their 56 percent. Bruce Douglas with the ball. Back to Mentz. Illinois now trying to extend on this four-point lead. Welch working over aisle. Now here's Mentz outside. Alford with a near steal. Lays it off. And off the side of the glass, Flop alertly 
pulls the errant ball down, and here comes Indiana. A chance to pull back to within two. Illinois has gone to a zone. Looks like now they're back to the man-to-man. -man. Wait a minute. No, it's a zone. And knocked back and saved by Thomas. Looks like a 1-3-1 one, one zone. In the block. Brooks. Where does Indiana want the ball to go against a 1-3-1, one, one, John? Looks like Mentz is covering that corner pretty well. There's the turnover. Douglas will bring it up. That's the fifth turnover, fourth turnover for Indiana. Six and a half minutes. Douglas from outside. This time it doesn't fall. Indiana clears. And the block. Back up. Oh, that was intended underneath for Thomas and just a little bit out of reach. Thomas was cutting on the baseline. Norman gets a screen from Douglas. The shot is off the rim, no good, and Isle makes the save for Indiana. Good play by Steve. The last time offensively, he had a ball go off his hand out of bounds. He tried to dribble instead of catch it. This time, he makes the make sure he has in his hands just to gain possession. Stepping up, Alford. It doesn't fall. He's long. Lou Henson really upset with the defensive play of the well, Illini inside. He's taking good shots, Chuck. It's just a matter that they just aren't falling for him. That time off the run, they'll normally hit that shot. Altenberger leans in. Thomas just tears it off the board. We'll see Stu Robinson for Indiana at the next dead ball. Inside the block, and he brings the ball down. And jump ball. That's going to go to Indiana. Hustle by Daryl Thomas. And as Brooks sits down, here's Stu Robinson. Indiana apparently needs some outside shooting, John. And a little more quickness, maybe, at the guard position. If Illinois is going to stay in his own. I think uh, Stu had a great game against Ohio State, shooting from the outside. And Coach wants to get him in there. Now you see him on the point. That may move Steve down to the free throw line extended, where he'll try to get the shot. Thomas. Alford, let's watch. Indiana set it up. It goes to the post. And a foul. And Norman is called for grabbing Uwe Block. That is the 17th foul and will send Indiana to the line. Indiana's gone, or Illinois has gone to 2-3 zone. There you see the two players high. Ube cuts across the bot, uh, across the top of the bottom line there. Norman comes across with a foul. Now Ube's either got to take that quick shot or look opposite high, which would be Alford's free throw line extended, or opposite low, which is Daryl Thomas on the baseline. Good look at Ube. He has four points and misses the free throw. Loose ball, but it is saved by Illinois. Uh, neither team is really sharp tonight. Indiana playing against an enormity of talent on this Illinois team, and Illinois just a little bit off the game. What do we have? Reach in foul on Stu Robinson. Well, that sort of evens it up a little bit. We'll send Illinois to the line. the first against Robinson and Bruce Douglas the 6'3 junior from Quincy Illinois probably one of the most highly sought after prep players at Quincy three years ago as the one and one rolls it in his ninth point to lead both teams see what a great player he is he leads the league the Big Ten in steals and assists so just because he doesn't score a lot of points doesn't mean that he's not helping this Illinois team. There she is, free throw, 87%. He has 10. Illinois has a six-point lead, 23-17, with 453, 450 now remaining. Isle, he's trapped in the corner, gets it right back to Robinson, and out of bounds. Robinson has it deflected from his hands, but was the last to touch it. Got That's it. Go ahead, Chuck. Well, I was just going to say, the last uh, two times down the floor, Indiana's turned it over. The sixth for Indiana, six for Illinois. You can't let yourself get trapped in a corner against the zone. They threw the ball in there to Steve. For Illinois double teams, they used the out-of-bounds line as another defensive player. Well, but it won't fall. There's Robinson. Up the aisle. The block. Back out. Alford. 
good motion. He's offered about uh, two feet away from where he normally shoots. Block tries to take it in. He has position. Good. Robinson. Indiana's able to get the ball into Uve there. He's got to watch the three seconds, but the zone is most vulnerable if you can get the ball inside the three-second lane. You can either shoot or pass, as I mentioned before. This time, he threw to Alford and then to Robinson for the shot. No good. There's pushing underneath. Altenberger, he's dead eye from there. Altenberger's first two points, 25-19. The deficit is six. Indiana would love to have two here, maybe three. To block and around. No foul. Good hustle. Ephraim Winters comes over to make the steal. Douglas. Back to Mintz. Welch lays it off inside. Mintz gets the easy two. Uve was caught on the wrong side that time. He was on the low side. Mintz just forced him out of bounds and then left an easy lane for the pass and the layup. Now Indiana really with a big hole dug now. They're going to have to work their way out of this eight-point margin and get back into this contest before the end of the first half. 244-43 remaining. Thomas has room but will not take the shot. Wheeling motion. Here's Isle from outside. It does not fall. Loose. Put up and in. Chased down by Daryl Thomas. And he's slow in getting back. He checked that left knee to make sure he's all right, but he appears to be okay. Looks like he got bumped on the knee, but it wasn't uh, a twist of the knee of any kind. Sure, it, it gave him a lot of pain, but it looked like he was fine running back down the floor. Mintz from the free throw line. No good. Rebound. Robinson with two minutes remaining. Indiana can narrow the margin. And they throw it away. Eighth turnover for Indiana, and we have an official's timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The score, Illinois 27, Indiana 21. The big push is on at your Fort Wayne Olds dealers. Both dealers have to clear out their present inventories before the tax man shows up on March 1st. That means if you come out now to Collins Oldsmobile on Coldwater Road or O'Daniel Oldsmobile on Bluffton Road, you'll find some unbelievable tax savings on every new Oldsmobile in stock. You better believe it. You'll buy a new Olds for much less in February at Collins and O'Daniel Oldsmobile. Again this year at the Parade of Homes, the story was Pella. Nine out of the ten homes and condominiums have Pella windows from Ermshire suppliers. With the cost of new home construction, it just doesn't make sense to have anything but the quality and energy efficiency of Pella. And don't settle for less if you're replacing windows either. Ermshire's will show you the Pella that's perfect for your home. The significant difference, Pella. Only at Ermshire Suppliers, 2001 South Calhoun, downtown Fort Wayne. Well, it's a six-point hole, 27-21. Indiana has to fight its way out of at least as best it can with the minute 57 seconds remaining. There are the other two games tonight, and that first one, Purdue versus Ohio State, could have a lot of bearing on how Purdue and Indiana match up this coming Saturday, John. And Minnesota at Northwestern. Last night, Wisconsin defeated Iowa, a big surprise, sending Iowa back into a tie for second place. With an 8-5 record, and the final on that game played at Wisconsin Fieldhouse was 54-53 Badgers. Here's Douglas on Robinson. Winters. And now Blop lays off Winters. He'll step up, and they cut to the basket, but no shot. Four pass. Now Illinois content to work some time down. Douglas, however, will put it up. No good. And there's a foul that's going to be called on Robinson. And that's going to send Douglas back to the line. The, the fouls are so subtle at times, John. I know you as a former player in the modern day uh, of, of this game realize that just a hand brush a lot of times called. And many times inside, you're knocked from side to side. And 
shoved out of bounds and there's never a call. Do, do the players ever at any time either way on either team get a feeling that they can't judge the pace of the game? You try to, Chuck, but the, but the one thing about refereeing that each coach would like to see is just that it be consistent. If a, if a coach knew that it would be consistent one way or the other, uh, I think they could make adjustments. But boy, if it keeps going up and down on, on little fouls and that kind of stuff, it really makes it difficult for the players. But, you know, refereeing's a tough job. Well, that's not to imply, we were not implying that there was any inconsistency tonight. It's just the way the game goes. Here's Thomas, good reverse direction, misses the shot. Isle tried to follow, and strong to the boards was Tony Welch. Anthony pulled down a big board, 28-21, seven-point lead for Illinois. Now let's watch to see what Douglas does. He is so quick and so accurate. Douglas with 13. He's really got his confidence today. I think normally he's not going to take this many shots, in a, especially in a game, let alone the first half. But he's got that feeling. He's made a couple shots. He's got a few inches on Stu, and so he wants to try to take him to the basket. Almost throws it away, trying to hook up with Alford. Now Robinson, 27 seconds left on the shot clock, 33 on the game clock. Thomas will shoot. Score! Thomas has 10. And 20 seconds. Illinois will play for the last shot. They have a seven-point lead, can take as many as nine in at halftime. They have it in the hands of the man they want it. There it is. Four seconds, three seconds remaining. Time for one shot. It will not go as the last second shot by Robinson wouldn't have counted anyway. We've come to the end of the first half of play with the score, Illinois 32, Indiana 23. We'll be back here at Assembly Hall to check the individual scoring in just a minute. Jim Kelly Buick is a nice place to do business, and that reflects good people. Jim Kelly people are good people. Doesn't it make sense when you're in the market to buy a new or extremely clean, low mileage used automobile to visit a nice place to do business? No hype, no high pressure? From the sales professional who introduces you to your new automobile to the permanently assigned five-man service team, a complete team effort to satisfy your every automotive need. It's a family spirit at Jim Kelly Buick, a nice place to do business. Look, John, the tax banners come and stall Smith Appliance and TV. Mark down all these appliances at giveaway prices. Wow. Get an RCA 19-inch TV for only $269.95. And this RCA remote TV is now only $369.95. And VCRs start at only $369.95. The tax man cometh. Hurry, beat the tax man and save. Stall Smith. The Fortel computerized line testing system at GTE enables facility tester Denny Stoppenhagen to isolate potential telephone line problems even when lines are not in use. It locates and identifies the trouble before a customer even knows it exists. This system was first used exclusively here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. The city we are proud to call home. clean, profitable soybean fields. We asked top growers across the Midwest what they used to get them and what many of them said might surprise you. Amovin. I've used it for 17 years. Overall, I'd say Amovin is probably an excellent product. Amovin's old reliable to me. I like it because it doesn't stress the crops and it's dependable, though I think it's a good product. I think Amovin is important. I've been using it for six years now and there'd be a real difference without it. Amovin. Top growers use it for results and so should you. There's the halftime score. It was a close game for about the first six minutes of play. But now it is spread to a nine-point Illinois lead, 32 to 23. John, the difference in this contest really is Indiana thus far does not have any one or any combination of players so far with the kind of offense Illinois is running that can handle Bruce Douglas. Uh, 23 points for Indiana in the first half. Uve with only four points. Alfred not uh, playing well. If not for Daryl Thomas in a great half, uh, not only scoring but rebounding and doing the whole thing, Indiana be in trouble. 32 points defensively, not too bad, but Bruce Douglas has been the main culprit. He's got half of the Illinois points uh, just working on his own. Indiana's got to figure a way to stop him in the second half. 
Indiana, however, is getting good productivity out of Daryl Thomas, but there is just the, there's the physical side of this game, John, that Indiana is giving up on the boards. Up from winners, Anthony Welch at 6'9", Scott Mintz is 6'10", Ken Norman 6'8", and they're not just tall players. They're very athletic. They get in and really work hard around that basket. I think both teams have been working hard inside, but I think you made a good point, Chuck, that neither team just seems sharp. Besides Douglas really playing well, uh, neither team really, uh, just both coaches, I think, are going to try to figure out how to make both teams sharper here in the second half. We have an interesting halftime for you uh, concerning breast cancer, and that will be coming up in just a moment after we tell you that tonight's game between Indiana and Illinois is being played at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. The score here at halftime, Illinois 32, Indiana 23. I'll give you a buck seventy-five. Come on, Tom, it's worth at least three dollars. A buck seventy-five, Virgil. Take it or leave it. Okay, a buck seventy-five. You got two dollars, my boy? No, but I have a dollar seventy-five. Climb <laughs> on board, my boy. The heavens await us. Gus Grissom, another Indiana legend, brought to you with pride by Farm Bureau Insurance. Hello, I'm Dale Osborne. I've been riding pasture land for some 40 years. See those antelope and deer over there? They're grazing on top of what was an Amex coal mine here in Wyoming. In the West and Midwest, Amex Coal Company goes to special care in reclaiming the land so that it's as good or better than it was before it was mined. Right, Mother Nature? My friends think it's good enough to eat. <laughs> Amex Coal Company. We're resourceful with the land. When I was a kid, I worked one whole summer to save $5 for a football. Talk about learning the value of a dollar. Now I have more to save. And AFNB gives me the advantage of more ways to save it. Safely. More people save more money, more ways at American Fletcher National Bank. The advantage is yours. AFNB. That's the place for my money. <laughs> Each year, more than 100,000 women find out they have breast cancer. And because fear of the possible results of those tests can cause anxiety enough, it's reassuring to know that there's now an alternative diagnostic device on the market, the ultrasound breast scanner. It's also good to know that your Indiana University Medical School played a major role in developing the scanner, along with the Indianapolis Center for Advanced Research. Furthermore, the scanner is now being manufactured in Mooresville, Indiana. First, I'd like you to meet the president and executive director of the Indianapolis Center for Advanced Research, Dr. Thomas D. Franklin, Jr. Ultrasound, sound waves above the audible range, have been used in medicine and biology since the 1920s. However, only during the last 15 to 20 years have great strides been made in the diagnostic applications of ultrasound in medicine. Research scientists, engineers, and physicians have found that they could use echo reflections of sound waves to image internal organs and tissues of the body. One application that we have developed in collaboration with the Indiana University School of Medicine faculty has been an ultrasonic breast scanner. The ultrasonic breast scanner took over eight years of research and development conducted by the Indianapolis Center for Advanced Research and the IU Medical Center. IU radiologist Dr. Valerie Jackson was involved with clinical testing and now uses breast scanners in evaluating patients. Ultrasound doesn't replace x-ray mammography. In young patients, we may use it as the sole breast examination modality, but in most women, we'll start with an x-ray mammogram. and We'll use the ultrasound to better evaluate areas that we have trouble seeing with the mammography or to evaluate specific masses to see if they're cystic or solid or to better tell whether they may be benign or malignant. 
Dr. Elizabeth Kelly Fry, who's an associate professor at the IU School of Medicine, has been the principal investigator with ICFAR on this instrument. If a woman has a malignant tumor in her breast, it's very important that that tumor detect, be detected while it is still small so that after its removal, she can have an almost normal lifespan. In our present studies, we are using high-frequency sound waves, that is, higher than are normally used, so that we can detect tumors which are a half a millimeter in size, that is, of the order of 1 64th of an inch. After the breast scanner model was approved, the Center for Advanced Research licensed a Mooresville firm, Labsonics, to produce the breast scanner. Labsonics president Ted Engelhart is in charge of marketing the scanner. The introduction has been very successful. Some of the things that have made this possible have been the very good user training program here in Indianapolis, the attention to product quality and documentation. We're also fortunate in having the original development group with us continuing to make enhancement in the images and electronics. The development of the ultrasound breast scanner is a fine example of how IU research scientists are putting their knowledge to work to help improve the quality of life. And the evolution of the scanner became possible through a unique alliance among three organizations, the IU Medical School, Lab Sonics of Mooresville, and the vital link between them, the Indianapolis Center for Advanced Research. I'm Kit Field Kruger for IU Halftime. We're back here at halftime. You see Steve Risley over there in the corner of your shot. John and I were sitting up here totaling up. There are 11 former players. Any more, John? Brandt, Chuck Brandt. Chuck Brandt is here. That's 12. And we'll run down some of those players for you a little bit later on. Right now, let's pause to hear from our local stations. This is the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. I'm on my way to Grandma. Hey, how about some low-fat cottage cheese? Maybe a Dicola? Well, I was saving this for myself, but... Hold up, hold up, for the out of the ordinary sugar-free Dr. Pepper. Mama warned me about wolves. Hold up, hold up, for the out of the ordinary at Don Ayers, the seventh annual Celathon continues its record-breaking pace, but Don Ayers isn't satisfied, so he's increasing rebates on every Pontiac Honda and Asusu truck. Make your best deal and save hundreds, then Don Ayers will pay you a cash rebate of up to $1,000. Unbelievable savings now at Don Ayers. Don Ayers, Don Ayers, Pontiac Honda. My Every Tuesday account allows me access to my money every Tuesday without any penalty. Not every 30, 60, or 91 days, but every Tuesday. And I can make deposits or withdrawals at over 20 Summit Bank offices countywide. Every Tuesday gives me the flexibility I want. Every Tuesday, targeted to provide an annual yield consistently higher than the money funds rate. Available only at Summit Bank. Member FDIC. Thirty-two twenty-three is the score here at halftime. Illinois uh, with that lead, and we have some halftime statistics for you that uh, we'll be passing along to you here in just a moment. I want to take just a moment to tell you also that um, this game, of course, is going by way of satellite all over the country, and we saw Nancy Knight before the contest. Tim Knight is out on the West Coast in Palo Alto, California, probably keeping statistics, so we're going to be passing those along. There they are. There's the halftime statistics. And we made an error last week, John, when we were talking about it. We called them the Stanford Indians. They haven't been known as that uh, for a long time. The Stanford Cardinal. And so for all of you folks out there in Palo Alto, our apologies to you. The halftime stats fairly even, but uh, the margin has to go to Illinois. There you see uh, both teams at, uh, a little above their defensive average. We mentioned was about 44 percent. Illinois with a couple more free throws, which has really helped them. They've got a few more rebounds. Both teams uh, with too many turnovers. OK, the leading scores, Thomas for Indiana, then Alford and Block. And, of course, the leading scorer for Illinois is Bruce Douglas with 15 points. Norman has seven, and Weitzinger has four. Both teams are back on the court. So we'll be set for second-half action, and we'll be right back after these messages. 
Remember your first car? It was all you ever thought about. Remember? Anything else? Uh, yeah, you got any mufflers? Mufflers? Mustard. I mean mustard. I had Farm Bureau Auto Insurance then, and I've got Farm Bureau Auto Insurance now. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, have you got any mustard? <laughs> Protecting Indiana families for 50 years. This buzz for everyone in the spotlight before the show begins. This buzz for you. for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Hey, man, not This Bud's It reportedly was a burglary in progress. Seems a home was being robbed of energy. They accused each other. Upon investigation, I discovered an old range in the kitchen. I explained the energy and money-saving advantages of a new gas range with pilotless ignition. Fortunately, they saw things my way. For energy-saving details, see your gas company or local gas appliance dealer. They could have at least invited me for dinner. We'd like to thank someone special for seeing us through the tough times. Thank you, America. We're thanking you, America, with 8.8% financing on new front-wheel drive Omnis and chargers, plus two great package deals. With deal one, you get an automatic transmission at no extra charge. With deal two, you get five-speed AM FM stereo and a 2.2-liter engine. It's your choice. No extra charge. Thank you, America. So come on in and see how we'll thank you. Scheduled for this coming Saturday, uh, the teams involved in that schedule, Purdue, of course, here at Indiana, that game time is at 4 o'clock, then Iowa at Northwestern, Illinois at Ohio State, Michigan at Michigan State, and the way this season is shaping up, with the exception of Michigan's game, John, I would say that, uh, that every one of these teams has a very significant shot at postseason play when you stop to consider 64 teams going to the final, the NCAA exactly this right. year. right. Now we're getting down to, to Indiana's remaining games. They'll be at Minnesota and at Iowa next week. We'll be doing that game at Minnesota. And then the final weekend will be Michigan State and Michigan at home. All right. Uh, Illinois' remaining games, Ohio State, that's a big contest. They're on the road. Uh, uh, and then uh, for that contest, then they're back uh, at the friendly confines of Assembly Hall uh, against Purdue, then Iowa, and Minnesota. So they finish out the season at home. Very, very quickly now, we're running down. Uh, we found all these players, former players here at Indiana uh, for tonight's game. Wayne Radford, Steve Offeld, Steve Green, Butch Carter, Steve Downing, of course, John Laskowski, Steve Risley, John Camstra, Ted Kitchell, you said, and then, of course, Jim Cruz, an assistant coach, Tommy Abernathy, and you were quick to point out Chuck Franz is here as well. So it's pretty good representation. You guys ever get together and play golf? I suppose they don't play golf with you, do they, John? We do once in a while, and I'll tell you the other thing, we're planning a picnic this summer, a reunion, like we had last year for uh, the Olympic Games. So I'm sure all the guys are looking forward to that. Illinois puts the ball in play. They have the lead, a 9-point, 32-23 lead. Here's Welch. Indiana going with Isle, Alford, Thomas, Blop, and Brooks. Inside to Winters, it's no good. And struggling for the ball, but right back to Winters, and he does not get the ball to go in. Darryl Thomas. Down. Darryl Thomas with the rebound. He was four out of seven from the field in the first half. He had seven rebounds, eight points, played 20 minutes, two block shots. Uh, really the way to come back. Pretty complete game. It won't fall. And the others trying to get back into this game quickly, and they go right to their score. Steve Al uh, Alford. Steve has had a little difficulty getting the shot to drop the last couple of weeks. Here's the drive by Douglas. Loses the ball, but a foul. And they're going to call it against Indiana. Boy, Douglas really can turn it on. goes against Indiana, number 23. Delray's in there to give Indiana a little more height to guard Douglas, but he's still got the confidence from the first half when he was able to get those 15 points. You see him come right down and try to go for more. Delray Brooks' second foul. Here's Douglas with 15 points already, and his first chance of the second half he hits. 
averages 9.2. That's hard to believe. 9.2, but he always has a good game against Indiana. Had a great game against Indiana at Champaign last year. Big part of the game right here, Chuck. We're uh, one minute into the second half. Indiana down by 11. They've got to start to make their run now as opposed to in the final 10 minutes of the game. Alford. Altenberger playing off Alford. And inside it goes to Blop. He's right back up and scores. That's good body control by Blop. Almost looked as if he was out of position, recovered, got his body back underneath him and put it up. Only four points for Uwe in the first half. He's got to have a better half. Altenberger. And a bump. And Brooks with his third foul. Now Indiana has its first player in trouble, and we're going to see Bob Knight go back to his bench, and here comes freshman Cree Smith, Tipton, Indiana. Smith with a little bit more height, 6'7". Right now, Indiana's got to find a way to stop Douglas. Smith on him now. Scott Benz. And a whistle. What do we have? Holding against Daryl Thomas. Thomas is first, the third against Indiana. Now, all of a sudden, fouls become very important to the Hoosiers because Indiana is getting closer and closer of putting Illinois at that line. And a whistle, offensive foul, pushing off. Anthony Welch, Steve Isle playing a little bit too close, and too close, and Welch using that arm to gain position. Illinois put a little pressure full court now. Altenberger and Douglas both pick up. Welch comes out to guard Thomas. Let's see what kind of defense Illinois is going to fall back into. They played that zone most of the latter part of that first half and gave Indiana some trouble. Now, Cray Smith is a tall guard. Alford. Douglas with an exceptionally long reach, and Alford has to really guard that ball when he puts it on the floor. Smith had a good game against Illinois at Illinois at 10 points coming off the bench as the fifth freshman. Good drive inside by Steve Isle. Illinois in a man-to-man -man defense that time down the floor. 34-27. The Hoosiers whittle away. Mentz inside. Winners follow all. How can you defend that? F from Winters with a fall away jump after it appeared that Indiana had the good defensive position. Kyle, Alford. Now it's Altenberger on Alford. To block. Back out. Thomas. Free throw line. No good. Rebound Altenberger. And right away they go to Douglas. The terrifying thing about Illinois is there isn't a senior out there. Altenberger, it's good. That's what he liked to do, sit down on the baseline, went, let Douglas handle the ball, and if his man goes to double team, he's able to hit the jump shot. An 11-point lead, 38-27. Alford is trapped on the baseline, gets it over, here's Flop, 12 feet, it's good. kept his composure that time. He had two men on him, and Illinois had a great trap going. He waited for the opening and hit Uve. Now Illinois with Scott Mintz on the top of the key. Altenberger all alone again. I, he just, he is a, an exceptional outside shot. Average is only 45%, but he's not called upon to shoot that much. Average is 9.2. Indiana trying to get something going. Smith. Thomas back over to Alford. Alford trying to get a move started on Altenberger, and he just can't, can't get it going. To Cree Smith. Well, Smith's first shot, and he has all the confidence in the world as he puts it up. He needed that, too. Open on the baseline now. Illinois will have to be careful help defensively off of him onto Uve. Winters steps around Brooks and uses the glass. 
Ephraim Winters. Two shots for Ephraim where he's, he's been off balance and somehow it's gotten both of them to go in. He was a preseason All-America from Street and Smith, Playboy and Sporting News magazines. 6'9", 230 junior from Chicago. To Blop. Back out. Alford. And it doesn't go. Chased down by Isle. No good. And hard to the floor goes Altenberger. And he's up, trots past his coach. But they don't go to their bench, so apparently Altenberger's all right. Inside. Ball away. And no good. Tipped up and in. Credit that basket to Ephraim Winters. Wells kept it alive, then Winters tipped it in. The Illini are just powerful on the boards. And with 14.29 remaining, we have a timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Indiana trails the Illini 31 to 44. This buzz for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. I remember the night the storm hit. The wind started howling. Come on, come on, let's hurry. And before I knew it, we were all over the cellar. It's okay, everything's all right. Fourteen twenty-nine left. That young man, youthful as he appears, is a freshman at Illinois. Olaf Flop. Bouvet's younger brother, seven foot tall, two thirty-five. I had a chance to talk to him before the game. A nice kid. He says he's improving his game, but he says he doesn't play against his brother very often. There's the field goal shooting. Indiana four of eight. Illinois five out of eight. Altenberger steps in to take the deflected pass. Lop was trying to go to aisle on the baseline. Mentz, Douglas, Smith doing a good job of staying in front of him, but Bruce Douglas, with just as John indicated before, all the confidence in the world, puts it up. That is his fifth point of the set, fourth point of the second half. He has 19 in the game. Baseline by Isle. And it rolls. Isle's giving a pretty good effort today. Just doing the things that he can. He took a baseline drive there. And looked off balance, but somehow got that shot to go. Here's Altenberger. Mentz and Indiana just laid off. Lop didn't even go for the ball. Alford was the one that chased it down on the baseline. Now let's see what Indiana can do. 46-33. Shuffle, step, and it won't fall. Knocked away. Well, there's that body contact we're talking about, John, and then just hand brushes and, and no calls. Good drive by Darrell, though, and his confidence is going to go way up after today's game. Waltenberger over Alford. Almost at will. The Illini are scoring. 48-33. It's a 15-point lead for Illinois. Smith inside a foul that will go against Illinois as Smith took it hard from Winters and Winters is called for the block. Winters wanted the charging call that time. Smith takes the ball right in uh, between three Illinois players gets the call he'll be at the line. Norman is back in and sitting down will be up from Winters. Winters leaves with eight points. He had 14. 14.7 14 points average to lead Illinois last year. I saw it.
Smith with his second hit is good. So Cree has three, 48-34, and we are approaching the 12-minute mark. Douglas and Welch playing with the ball. Welch in the men's, lobs it across to Douglas. Altenberger from the top of the key. He has plenty of range, Isle to Alford. Leans up and doesn't get it. Rebound the block. Steve really looking to get the offense going for himself. Makes a great move inside. Just misses that little shot. But left Uve alone for the rebound. 48-36. This crowd begins to come to life. A whistle away from the ball. Goes against Illinois. Anthony Welch called for an offensive foul. His second. And with that foul, an official's timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana trails Illinois 48 to 36. Now, at any famous recipe in Fort Wayne, you can make up your own lunch special for just $1.99. Pick one of six delicious entrees, livers, country fried steak, barbecue chicken sandwich, two pieces of chicken, gizzards, or our vegetable platter. Then choose two side orders from potatoes and gravy, green beans, or our famous salads. Add a biscuit, and it's yours for just $1.99. Serve Monday through Saturday till 3 p.m. at all Fort Wayne locations. If we didn't have the best chicken in Fort Wayne, you wouldn't come back now, would you? If you're trying to buy a new or used car or truck but are hampered by credit problems, Fort Wayne Dotson can help. Slow credit, no credit, whatever your problem, Fort Wayne Dotson salespeople will take the time and are trained to arrange financing in the most difficult situations. And now during Tax Clearance Month, we have huge discounts on every new and used car and truck in stock. So bring your credit problems to Fort Wayne Dotson for the financing assistance you need. Fort Wayne Dotson, 4920 Lima Road. There's the time remaining. Not too much time. Indiana trails by 12, and there's still enough time to be able to get back if they can get some offensive control of the game, John. There you see Illinois shoots 477 as a team. Right now, they're 7 out of 12 in the second half at 58%. Indiana, 6 of 12, 50%. The Hoosiers have the ball. They can cut that Illinois lead to 10. This is Cree Smith. He wants to go inside. Now back over to Alter. Thomas, double teamed on the baseline, works it out of traffic. Flop. Smith. Illinois in a 2-3 zone now, trying to force Indiana with the outside shot. There's the motion. And it doesn't fall. Douglas with the deep carom to Altenberger. Holds up and hits. Doug Altenberger has 10. 6'4 junior from Peoria, Illinois, with eight of those here in the second half. Alford has not scored in the second half. A drive by Smith. He's got a good move to the basket, and as Illinois crowds around him, he leaps up to get that shot away. He's made two of those. 50-38. Mance from the free throw line, puts a fake on flop. Here's Isle to help. Scott Mintz, a pretty good dribbler at 6'10". Feed off, and up and a score. Get that assist to Anthony Welch, and the basket to Scott Mintz, his second. Uve came to help out, and left his man open. Illinois wisely went to him, Mintz with the layup. Now, oh, Indiana trailing 52-38. Ten minutes remaining. We're ten minutes from the end of this game. Up off the glass, gets the roll. Cree Smith. He's using that head and shoulder fake. The way it should be used, he's catching Illinois off their feet and got a good roll that time. He's played a good game. Uh, there's no help. Loose ball. And look at this. Alford keeps it alive, unbelievably. By all rights, that ball should have been out of bounds. And right through Blop's hands. Here comes Douglas. He's driving on aisle. 
misses the shot. No foul. I can't believe it. I would have thought there had to be some contact one way or the other, John. No whistle. Now Douglas. They'll slow it down. Norman. And it doesn't fall. Alford gets the board. Illinois back quickly in the transition game. Free Smith. And a little bit quick. Indiana had nobody under the basket, and Bob Knight is up trying to settle his team down. He's not really so terribly hard on Smith, other than the fact to just remind him that that's a little bit too quick. Douglas. Get a pretty good test, John, of how good a player is when uh, someone such as Douglas loses control of the dribble and then without looking back at the ball can pick it up. Even when he loses control, he knows where it is. Here's Altenberger. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. It won't fall. Block with the board. Well, the defense by Indiana in this segment allowing just one shot. They've got to score on offense. Thomas blocked away. And right to Douglas. Scott Mintz working the point. Now Altenberger looking underneath, leans in, falls away, scores. He had Smith on him, but shoots kind of a fadeaway shot as Smith's momentum took him away from the offense. Altenberger hung in the air and made that shot. If coaches had to teach shots, it would not be a fall away jump. No, he just is a good shooter and he knows how to compensate when he's off balance. And loose underneath, pulled down by Norman. Illinois is just physical underneath, and Indiana, without the strength to hold in there, pushed out of position. Flop is down, but he tripped over Thomas. And that was a near steal by Smith. Good defense. Douglas. Douglas wanted to drive on Alford. There was a mismatch there. Welch will shoot over Isle. And look at this. Thomas chases it down Indiana ball. Two players hard on the floor on the far side. And the officials just letting them play. Slow and getting up. We have a timeout. Will be Norman and Thomas. But they're both back up and trotting toward their hubs. You are watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The score, Illinois 54, Indiana 40. When I was a kid, I worked one whole summer to save $5 for a football. <laughs> Talk about learning the value of a dollar. Now I have more to save. And AFNB gives me the advantage of more ways to save it. Safely. More people save more money, more ways at American Fletcher National Bank. The advantage is yours. AFNB, that's the place for my money. Strength, pride, tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdales have been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste, because this Bud's for you. Well, that's the story. 6.55 left to play, and Illinois has been in command since about... Uh, 15 to go in the first half. Indiana shot only 50% in three of their last seven games. They have now dropped to fourth in the nation in field goal percentage of 54.5%. And there you see in the half now, they're only 44%, so uh, not anywhere near the season average. Indiana with Stu Robinson and Delray Brooks back in the lineup, and the steal, Altenberger passes up Brooks and gets the lay-in. Doug Altenberger can do it all. He's played well here in the second half. He's now six out of eight shooting in the second half. Six and a half minutes left in this game. It will, from all appearances, go into the book as an Illini victory. Tip back up. Indiana trying to flagrantly go for the ball, just sort of flip at it instead of come down with it. And the turnover goes to Illinois with Douglas controlling. And we're going to see Joe Hillman. 
the Glendale California freshman in for the first time in this game. Cree Smith playing on Douglas. Uh, they're down to six minutes. Now inside the six minute mark. Altenberger blocked by Blop. Rebound to Isle. Smith pulls up and scores. Cree Smith off the bench for nine points. He had ten over at Illinois. So his two best productive games as a freshman for Indiana are against the Illini. He's shooting that ball with confidence. That a semi-fast break there. Went right up with a shot. Scores. Anthony Welch just goes over everybody, including Blop, who had good position, hooks it in for his first basket. To Blop. Can't fall. Io tries to tip. There's Winters. Fifty eight forty two sixteen point lead the Illini in control and we have five minutes remaining. Mentz the lob to Douglas tripled underneath but back out Illinois trying to use some of that clock now each time they come down the floor if they don't have the first shot just run the time clock down over Blop Scott Mentz. Mentz has six. And Indiana throws it away, trying to lob the flop. That is the 12th turnover of the game for Indiana. Sixty forty two whistle foul against Indiana it will be against Delray Brooks. He is fourth. Altenberger is replaced by Weisinger for Illinois. Tony back in saw some action as a matter of fact started for the Illini. Knight is talking. Coach Knight is talking to Delray Brooks who picked up his fourth foul and Joe Hillman has replaced Delray for Indiana. So Indiana now going with uh, a junior a senior and three freshmen. Steve Isle Joe Hillman and Cree Smith. And the winners loses control. Here's Weisinger flashing to the ball and Welch up off the glass over Robinson for his second field goal. Stu tried to come down to help, but he's just no match. When Welch got the ball inside, just went right over him. To Blob, beat from Hillman. The hook is good. Uve with a dozen. Weisinger back to Mentz and there's the back cut Douglas with an easy two Cree Smith tries to bounce to Blop we have a foul as the ball went through Blop's legs and Tony Weisinger is called for a reach in as you look at Lou Henson in his 10th season with 190 Potentially 191 wins against 107 losses at Illinois. A timeout with 321 remaining. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana trailing 44 to 64. I think the bond between Tom and me was formed the night he was born. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. It's a boy. The very next day, I bought a life insurance policy from Farm Bureau Insurance. The company was a lot like Tom back then. It wasn't very big. Hi, Dad. Well, I guess we've all grown up. Protecting Indiana families for 50 years. score to overcome now Magnus Pelkowski the 6'10 freshman from Bogota Columbia in for Indiana 
Hillman. Robinson to Pelkowski. Back off to Hillman. And over to Isle. It's no good. And the rebound is controlled by Illinois. Ephraim Winters has been dominant on the boards. Average is 7.1. Dominant and Wiley's been in there, of course. Has not, did not see much action in the first half. Another freshman for Indiana in a few minutes. Douglas tries to move. And we'll see Brian Sloan for the Hoosiers. Number four, Scott Hafner for Illinois out of Noblesville High School. He's a freshman there at Illinois. Hafner back out on top to Weisinger. Douglas with 11 seconds on the shot clock. Smith with the board for Indiana. Less than two and a half. Robinson. I have a feeling that Sloan will probably replace Robinson. That will leave Indiana with five freshmen in the lineup again. Baseline to Isle. Pelkowski. It's blocked. No foul. Hafner to the left side. Right down to the line and scores. Scott Hafner. And that's almost double points against uh, a team near his hometown. Back out, saved by Smith inside. Robinson, good. Good play by him, and he sets two up by drawing the defense, and then dumped it off to him. Hillman awaits Hafner. Throws it right back out on top. Here's Douglas inside. Rebound. Down. Stripped away by Joe Hillman. Holds it up. Illinois with a lot of its starters still in the game, and the simple reason is they just don't have that many players with eight people on the bench. Even though they take three out, they're still going to have some good players in the ballgame. Good control. And the first two for Joe Hillman. Hillman went up. Delayed a little bit, so he wasn't going to draw the Illini off his feet. Put it up off the glass. Good two points. Weisinger, Mentz, Winters. And now Weisinger with 50 seconds inside the minute. Hafner, no good. Rebound. Pelkowski with a big board. 66 48, 40 seconds remaining. Robinson. Smith inside. Good. Three Smith has 11. Second leading score, believe it or not, for Indiana. Smith really played a great game offensively. And he's done a, a yeoman job on Douglas because he's got that little height on him. He's worked hard today, and I think we'll see him more as the season goes on. Weisinger with 13 seconds, 12. Pelkowski comes out to front. Mentz off the glass, almost went in. Tip back, there's good team play. But the shot by Weisinger is missed. Four seconds, three. Up it comes Hillman. It won't go. And the buzzer sounds ending the ball game. Bob Knight will walk off the court as this contest has gone to the Illini. Final score is 66 to 50. A 16-point margin as you look at Lou Henson, who has picked up his 191st Illinois victory and his 431st career victory, spanning nearly 23 years. Illinois came into the game with a 48% field goal shooting average, and they stayed pretty close to it in tonight's shooting. In the second half of the game, they were over 50%, about 57%. At the free throw line, about 70%, and they're just about on there, too, as well. Rebounding, one of the best uh, in the Big Ten, although their 8-5, now 9-5 record does not show it. But uh, they average about 37.3 rebounds, and Indiana is below 30 rebounds per game. So uh, that's in Big Ten play. Indiana, as John had indicated before, uh, well off its 53% uh, shooting average that we have been so accustomed to seeing here. And they're about 70% effective from the line, too. And speaking of the line, incidentally, uh, Alford did not go to the stripe tonight. He finished again with only six points, his second bad game, scoring-wise in a row. And it's just one of those kind of contests where uh, apparently everything that you try to work on and set up, John, just uh, does not work out against a team as highly talented as Illinois. It seemed like he was trying to get the other parts of his game to the way he wanted to drive into the basket, trying to dump off and do those things. And usually if you're able to do that, when it's your turn to take that shot, they go in. He was only three of 10 in the first half, 
and then had had some trouble there in the second half also. Uh, he's just not played as consistently as we'd hope, especially in these last two games. Just looking down there, uh, Governor Orr's uh, press secretary, press aide, actually, Guy Johnson, uh, was at the game tonight with his son, Alan, and uh, nice to say hello to them. As you look at the, the face, I think, uh, really tells the entire story. A little bit of frustration uh, possibly going through her mind at some time or other after being so highly supportive of this club is, you know, well, what happened? What's wrong? But uh, it's it's one of those things. And uh, uh, Indiana, uh, we have a moment or two. We can relate back to it, and we're not doing it uh, defensively. We just do this to, to bring the information uh, to you folks. I think uh, a lot of people forget many times, John, after the great seasons that we saw here at Indiana, 74, 75, 76 with the NCAA championship, uh, 75 when you went 31 and 1 and the loss to Kentucky. And then, of course, uh, in, uh, in 76 with the win over Michigan at, uh, at uh, Philadelphia, that there was a 1977. And uh, that 1977 year was 13 and 12. And uh, a, a really a great disappointment over what many of the fans had been accustomed to seeing. Right. The consistency really is the thing that the coaches look for in this team. And we just haven't been able to find it uh, as the years progress. And uh, that's a reason why you've seen so many different starting lineups. There's a continual search to see which lineup uh, we can go with that can do a, do a good job for us. And really, even in today's game, with Daryl Thomas coming back as strong as he did, it just shows you you've got to have five players out there on the floor who are doing the job all at the same time uh, to get it done. It's just not a one-man game. We were talking about uh, the freshman earlier tonight, Cree Smith from Tipton, had 11 points. Blop had 12, eight of those coming in the second half, but Smith's 11 came all in the second half, and we pointed out that Cree had had a good game coming off the bench, the, the fifth freshman that was played uh, at Illinois, as Bob Knight played only Uwe Blop and five freshmen, and uh, Smith had 10 over there. Now, uh, the young man has to learn something from the experience that he gains against a tough team such as this. And uh, I would hope, as I'm sure Coach Knight hopes, that uh, it's the play of some of these underclassmen that uh, will carry over to the next game, the next game in this case being Purdue. Now, we did have a halftime score. Ohio State with an eight-point lead over Purdue, 38-30. So it's conceivable that Purdue can come into this contest uh, should they continue to lose, and we're not saying they will, they will come into this contest with an eight and six record, and Indiana now is six and seven. That that places really a, a lot more emphasis on the importance of this game if either of these teams is to have a shot at going to postseason play. Two bright spots in today's game, though, Chuck, and I think we mentioned Steve Isle uh, played a good job while he was in there. Uh, he got in the starting lineup today and did play well. And, of course, Cree Smith in the second half. So I think uh, between those two, we should be able to see them play quite a bit Saturday against Purdue. Well, we have a uh, little bit of time to continue talking here, but uh, we will continue with our post-game show and review tonight's game in just a minute. Rusty old tin cans, huh? Illinois. They won at Champaign 52-41, the first meeting of this season. The uh, halftime score, Indiana was in the, the um, locker room with a deficit of 32-23, uh, a nine-point uh, nine deficit. 
And then uh, coming out starting the second half of play was Douglas going to the basket right away. Brooks with a personal foul, his second. And uh, it was uh, a three-point play for Douglas. And then Uve came back to make it 34-25 with a hook shot from the baseline. And uh, Brooks picked up his third personal foul uh, at uh, the 18-29 mark. And then Cree Smith. That's when Cree made his appearance in the second half. And from that time on, Cree uh, did an excellent job of scoring his 11 points. So let's look at how the scoring broke down for Indiana. Flop with 12. That's off his 20.3 Big Ten average. Smith with 11. And that will help his average. Thomas has eight. I, you really can't fault Thomas at all tonight because uh, Darrell played an exceptionally fine game. I don't know how many people... Uh, Sure, it sounds like we're pro-Indiana in this, but let's just talk about injuries. I don't know how many people could stand back up on an injured knee again within three and a half weeks, much less play on it, John, and uh, that's, that's a credit. The difficult thing, though, is to play hard and aggressive as if there was nothing wrong with your knee, and obviously he knows it's bothering him, but mentally, uh, you hear this a lot about people who have knee injuries. Mentally, they never get themselves back into the ball game. but boy, uh, his first full game back, it really did look like Darrell came out to play and do the things he had to. He got all eight of those points in the first half, but uh, went to the basket to get him, went after rebounds. You saw him get knocked on the floor quite a bit, uh, had his knee bumped a couple times, but still kept on going. So, so mentally, although he only scored eight points, he was right in the ball game hustling, uh, making the plays, and that's what the coach is looking for. You had him early in the second half with seven, seven rebounds. He had to have at least two or three more. And uh, so uh, Thomas had a good game tonight. Steve Alford, well, uh, this is the second game in a row that Steve has been off. And, uh, uh, you know, who are we to say what it is? Coach Knight has said many, many times, if I knew the answers to all these questions, I wouldn't be coaching. I'd just sit back and be advising and making millions of dollars right. because uh, these are the answers you don't come up with. He was 3 for 10 in the first half, so obviously did not make any shots in the second half. The one thing you want to look for when you're, when you're in a shooting slump as a coach, I think, is number one, is he taking good shots? Mm -hmm. Is he taking the shots after three or four passes uh, because he's involved in the offense? And I think Steve is doing that uh, for whatever reason. I know I had some, uh, some bad shooting days, and boy, you just sit there and wonder in practice. They'll go in over and over and again, and you get to the game and you start to miss, and then you, you just, for some reason, you start thinking about it. As good a shooter as Steve Alford is, he still concentrates whether that ball goes in or not, and then you have to fight back. And, and what I tried to do was rely more on the other players players to get you involved in the offense. I think Steve tried to do that today by moving the ball, setting the pass, and when he gets the open shot, just go up with it. But mm -hmm. you can't really say that it's long or short to the side, so it's nothing technically wrong with the shot. It's just he hasn't found that rhythm like we're so used to seeing him hit. All right, let's take a look at Illinois, and of course their big strength was Bruce Douglas from Quincy, Illinois. He's just a, he's a phenomenal ball player. At least he's had some phenomenal games against Indiana. And uh, he finishes with 21 points. Doug Altenberger, what can you say? We said earlier in the game that he's considered by many to be the best defensive player in the Big Ten. I think he showed us a lot of that here tonight, John. He had two points in the first half and comes right out in the second half uh, to get 12 more points, most of them from the outside, and that's the guy that Indiana just stopped in the first half and took him right out of the ball game, and we're still fighting close, and then the second half, Douglas takes over, Altenberger hits from the outside and makes all the difference. Ephraim Winters, just about everybody's uh, first team Big Ten, 6'9", 230 junior from Chicago, uh, played very briefly in the first half. He finishes with eight points. Norman, who's been a thorn in the side of just about everyone that Illinois has played this year, he's the sixth man. He is uh, their, their first man off the bench when they need a forward. He finished with seven points. He's from Chicago Crane, and he's very aggressive on the boards. I think we saw that tonight. Scott Mentz. The 6'10 junior had only six points. He averages 7.2, so he's about on his average. Weisinger, Tony, is uh, a 3.5 shooter per game, points per game. He had four tonight. And uh, Welch, Anthony Welch, I don't really know what uh, uh, whether Welch was uh, ill or what, John, but uh, he is... Uh, uh, one of their most prolific players averages 11.8. He had only four. That came in the second half, and he saw limited action as Lou Henson was shuttling in and out. And I think most of you remember that uh, Welch redshirted last year because he had a broken bone in his left foot, and that occurred after the second game, so that was uh, uh, well beyond the length of time that the NC2A asks for in the in the uh, redshirting in the redshirting. Uh, 
uh, rules and regulations. You can't play, I think, 20% or more than 20% of a season's uh, total games. Well, we're looking right now for the uh, director, the executive director of the ABA USA, Bill Walls, who is here. And uh, while we do look for him, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with our post-game show in just a moment. This buzz for the crew, restoring America's pride in liberty. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this fun's for you. Stout's RV Sales presents the 1985 Fleetwood RVs, Southwind Motorhomes from $29.9, Tioga Minis from $19.9, and Prowler Travel Trailers from $59.95. Prowler Bip Wheels also in stock. Stout's is open Monday through Saturday with over 300 units to choose from. Hi, I'm Harold Stout, inviting you to visit us soon. We're on US 31 across from the Greenwood Park Mall. After the sale is done, Stout's RV service is number one. This is the Farm Bureau Basketball Network. My agent needed a Zoom copier. Naturally, he didn't want to spend a lot, so he got Minolta's Compact Beta 350Z. When I get a rave review, he makes great big copies. When I get a small-minded review, he makes little tiny copies. And it's easy to get any size in between and in a variety of colors. Of course, I don't save my reviews. My agent wants them. <laughs> I want them. I don't want them. The new Beta 350Z Zoom copier at a very small price. Call A.B. Dick Products at 484-0451. When old friends get together, get together with old friends. At Cap'n Court, we share that tradition with you. Traditions are important to us at Lebemoff's Cap'n Court. Your special moments deserve everything we can do to make them last forever. Because serving you best is our tradition. At Captain Court Beverage Stores, get together with the friends. The right food for people, people moving up, is Canterbury Green. When you want the best out of life, you gotta go for it now. Make the right move, make the right move, to the life of your dreams, the life of your dreams. your Indiana Ford dealers Everything Goes Tax Sales event. Our last chance to get rid of everything in stock before we get taxed. And your last chance to save on a wide selection of new and used cars and trucks. Forget the sticker price. Forget the blue book. Everything goes for less. Top dollar trade-in allowance is easy financing. And your final chance to save before inventory tax time. Everything goes. Everyone saves during your Indiana Ford dealers Everything Goes Tax Sales event. But it all ends February 28th. Unless everything's gone. A transmission problem can strike terror in the heart of a car owner, but you can't let this little fella scare you. If you think your car's transmission, automatic or standard, is acting a little bit strange, let Russ Moore Transmission check it out. We've been Fort Wayne's hometown transmission specialist for 40 years, and what we don't know about transmissions isn't worth knowing. So why worry about a silly transmission problem? That's what we're here for, right guys? Right. Snyder Space Project almost ready. The story 